What's up YouTube, it's your boy Mark Dark, and I'm back with another video. If you're new, if you love power, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video, and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now, today I'm going to be talking about Power Book 2 Ghost Episode 2. This is just my quick thoughts, first impressions of this episode. I want you guys to leave your first impressions of the episode. Let me know exactly how you felt after watching it. And later on, I will be dropping the full recap for you guys. So what are my quick thoughts for this episode? I'm going to break it down in, in the sense of just the three main characters, which is Tariq, Tasha, Monet. Now, Tariq, let's get to his character as far as my first impressions. I think he did very good this episode. Um, and one of the things about Tariq is they was trying to make Tariq talk bad about Ghost. And you can just look at him and, you know, you can really tell that he didn't really want to go up there and dog out his dad, regardless of how much they trying to tarnish um, James St. Patrick and his name. Tariq knew deep down inside that he didn't really want to do that. Now, was he willing to do that to save Tasha? Yes. I mean, that's something that he had to do to save his mother. Yeah, he probably would have did it. But at the end of the day, you can tell deep down inside he didn't feel right dogging out his daddy. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm glad that Simon Stern did come in this episode and tell Tariq some things that he did not know about his father. Um, in this episode, Tariq, he started to see like, man, my dad wasn't as bad as I thought. Um, you know, he had a lot of different things about him. As Tasha said, he's a complicated man. And Tariq, he learned that this episode, um, he started to see things or started to learn things about ghosts that he didn't know when he was alive. Um, now, as far as your boy Tariq, I'm going to say you like this. That scene that he had with Kane when he got out that when they got out that car, he schooled him right there. Your boy Tariq definitely schooled Kane um, as far as telling him about Frank, about him being the snitch and stuff like that. The way he handled that scene, that was solid in my opinion. Um, pretty much told him like, look, this dude is a snitch. You should know that. If you know what I'm saying, if anybody should know it, you should. Um, Tariq, he's definitely watching the Tahadas family, but at the same time, we know the Tahadas family is watching him. Um, and like I said, I will be breaking down that more um, in the full recap. Now, as far as Tasha, on the other hand, she needs a lot of practice when it comes to being on stand. Um, just thinking about what she's going to be saying in general when she's brought up and when they, you know, when they talk to her, because she's making a lot of mistakes and then these mistakes cannot be made on stand. She already messed up in the first episode by mentioning Tommy Egan's name in this episode. Um, Davis McLean, his whole thing was why, why was they pressing this federal charge? Because, you know, Paula Monterazzo, she was like, they overcharging Tasha where Davis McLean was like, it's something more, you know what I'm saying? He believed that they had a reasoning why they wanted to do this. And that's exactly what he was trying to prove. But even though he's trying to prove this, it's going to make it hard, you know, for his case and for these charges to be dismissed because Tasha, she brought up Tommy Egan's name. Not only did she bring his name up, she made the crucial mistake of saying that she told Tommy Egan to do this. Now, eventually Tommy Egan will have to talk. I don't know what episode or if they're going to bring him in or what. But realistically, if this was to happen, he has to be um, the person to, you know, defend himself. He's going to have to somebody have somebody represent him either way it goes. Realistically, if this was to happen in real life, Tommy Egan will definitely be a per person of interest. And he would definitely have to say something about this to defend himself because Tasha out here saying that he killed Ghost. Oh, hell no. Nah. Do you believe Tommy Egan is going to let that, you know, do you honestly believe he's going to let that happen? No way. He's not allowing that to happen at all. Um, Like I said, Tasha overall in this episode, man, she's, you know, she's trying to adapt. She's learning still. But man, she still has, she has a whole lot to learn, man. It's crazy. Um, Now, I do give her props for the whole prison thing about, you know, helping the inmate out about as far as getting that morning after pill, Tasha is trying to, you know, create, you know, friends while she's locked up. She needs to get, you know, power while she's locked up and to be able to move because she's going to need protection. She's going to need different things. So, of course, you know, setting and helping, you know, pretty much Tariq helping his mother out with the help of your girl Monet. She was able to get that morning after pill 
and she got a burner phone inside there because people was wondering why is Tasha talking to Tariq about you know getting a gun and you know about the case like like details that you wouldn't even say over the regular phone so now we know Tasha has a phone a burner phone inside um and yes we saw Tasha at the funeral she was allowed to come regardless of the reasoning we knew that she's going to be able to get to, to this funeral right um now let's get to Monet and then we're going to end off this quick thoughts video now Monet in this episode was watching watching a lot we learned a lot about her character as far as what she wants to do and she has her own agenda now make sure you check out my channel because I'm breaking down all these characters and you will already be aware that what Monet really wants to do she wants to protect the family but she wants to do it by her means and when I say her means her way she's not necessarily you know strict on family code and you see it in this episode Monet got a I want to say it's similar to how Ghost and Angela was not all the way but the principles you know what I'm saying she's with this dude Danello and of course he's a cop you know what I'm saying and she's getting information from him now of course her family don't know nothing about this this is against family code she kept saying we got to hurry up before Kane comes back which we saw at the end of the episode Kane realizes that his mom is definitely messing around with this Danello dude and he's going to look deep into this and as I told you guys I've been telling you for the last few weeks because people kept asking me how do I know that is going to be issues with Kane and Monet well just based off Kane's description Kane pretty much said, I mean, in this description, he's pretty much saying that he is more, you know, focused on family code and up, uh, you know, upholding his father's reputation. And of course, his loyalty will be tested um, when, of course, his mom is once she wants to do things her way. So it's going to be a challenge for both of them. The thing is this Monet, she will off her kids. Let me repeat. She will do her kids in. She doesn't care if you or not doing what she wants you to do, whether you are her husband or her kid or family, whoever, she will end you. Let's just get that clear. And in the next upcoming episodes, we will definitely figure that out. Um, I'm just letting you guys know. And, you know, like I said, it's just based on her description. And like I said, Mary J. Blige, they did an interview and she clearly said the same thing that I'm telling you right now. Um, overall, this was uh, this was a good episode, in my opinion. I think it's going to be building up. It's a lot of different characters that are going to pop up that we don't see on these websites that have the casting. Um, the IMDB website, you know, they don't have all the information. Now, Stars and Power, they did a good job this year of hiding a lot of the casting. For example, it's a lot of it's a lot of uh, actors and actresses that's only booked for one episode. But we saw in this episode. People are in more than one episode, right? They had Simon Stern booked for one episode. They had Stephen Ott, the Democratic Party guy. He was booked for one episode, but we saw him in this episode. They didn't even have Blanca Rodriguez in the casting. Um, they didn't even have Rashad Tate in the casting, right? But he was in the episode. So they did a very good job as, as far as hiding certain casting. That means it's going to be some surprises this season. It's going to be some people that, you know, we're going to be shocked like, man, they in this, you know what I'm saying? They in this installment of power. And that's a cool thing because that way we can be surprised. And, you know, some of our predictions may just come true. But as I told you guys and before I end the video and, you know, everybody knows it was the ghost. It was ghost and it was his funeral. Right. But as I told you, they was going to do a closed casket. They are not going to open that casket. They're not going to give you that 100% confirmation that he's gone. Now, of course, in writing aspects, he's dead. Ghost is gone, right? But as a writer, as a, you know, somebody that's making the show, you want to make it look like it's a possibility that he's alive. This is all promotion. Trust me. And it, you know, it leaves it open just in case they want to bring him back. Now, I told you guys, in my opinion, I think he's 100% dead. The only way he comes back if Cordy Kemp, the writers, want to bring him back. It's, it's not all up to Cordy Kemp because I know a lot of people keep saying, well, you know, it's up to Cordy Kemp. Well, not necessarily. If you guys don't remember, Cordy Kemp wanted Angela to come back. She wanted Angela to fake her death. 
But everybody else did not agree. They said, no, we don't want to roll with that storyline. Um, she wanted Angela to come back at the end of season six and surprise everybody. That's what she originally wanted to happen, but they didn't want it. Everybody else said no. So, you know, yes, Cordy Kemp is the showrunner. She's the writer, you know, the creator of the show, but doesn't mean she has all the say so. This is a team effort. So just remember that. So when it comes to this whole ghost thing, as she said, you know, if he was to possibly come back, it wouldn't be because Ghost is so smart or whatever. It will be because they want him to. Just remember that. But um, you guys let me know what you thought about this episode. I think it was a very good episode. It's building up for something very special, in my opinion. But I will be dropping that recap later on for you guys. So stay tuned. But let me get on out of here, man. It's your boy, Mark Dark. I'm out. Peace.